Welcome friends to another r slash malicious compliance video. If you're a swell fellow, then you know the best way to help support the channel is to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our first story of the day is by Zephyrman300. Project cancellation fee is 50% of the purchase order value? We'll revise the purchase order value then. The calm before the storm. Once upon a time, many moons ago, I was but a lowly peon project engineer. I'm being repressed, working on a big million dollar project that my company was contracted to do for Client Corp. That was part of a larger project by the Client Corp. Things were progressing well, we had the job design and engineering done, materials ordered, ready to mobilize the team to the job site. All of a sudden, Client Corp's lead engineer, Bob, says unto us peons, Hark ye, your project will now be cancelled because the project will be cancelled. Of course, we weren't too happy about it because 1. All the work we'd put in up to that point basically just went up in smokes. 2. Even with cancellation fees, that kind of just barely covered the costs we'd incurred to date. No profit. 3. We were now stuck with a huge amount of materials that we had to find a way to redeploy with a shelf life. And 4. We knew that claiming cancellation fees was going to be a painful, thorny path. Boy oh boy, was it truly a painful and thorny path to walk indeed. Breakdown and negotiations. So my team and boss put together the supporting documents, etc. and prepared the job cancellation invoice. Then appointed me as the sacrificial lamb, bearer of the cancellation invoice to deliver the news to the client corp. Bob was not happy. Duh. Negotiations started with Bob, his bosses, Adam my boss, and me in the room. Barely 10 minutes in and there's raised voices, palms slamming on the table, angry, angry men all around. Adam and myself tried our best to placate the client's team to no avail, even as they tried whatever intimidation tactics they could to bully us into dropping the cancellation fees. We'd worked out a few options beforehand to be more flexible in this, but all were shot down by Bob's team in anger. Finally, Adam said the magic words, This cancellation clause is written into the master contract with Mega Client. If you don't agree to this, then perhaps we can escalate to Mega Client's higher management for arbitration. The room fell silent. Obviously, Bob slash Client's team already had a lot of foul-smelling substances on their plate already, but the failure of the larger project as a whole. Their subsidiary organization was formed as a special purpose company just for this project. And the last thing they needed was more attention from the parent organization. Q malicious compliance. Fine, says Bob. You know what? We'll pay you the cancellation fee. 50% of the purchase order value as stated in the contract. Bob's face took on a sinister smirk. He says, but we'll need to adjust the purchase order value. And with that, Adam and I got booted out of their office. The very next day, my company accounts department started screaming. Apparently, client had indeed adjusted the purchase order value from the original X million dollars down to $10,000. That meant that the cancellation fee, going by the letter of the contract, was now only $5,000. Jesus, talk about a low blow. But wait, there's more. All subsequent attempts to reach out to Bob and his team by phone or email were stonewalled. Finally, after a few days, I personally paid Bob a visit at his office, only to have him laugh in my face and basically say, What you gonna do about it? Other follow-up meeting requests to Bob and his team were denied outright for a couple of weeks. Finally, Adam pulled some strings to have our company's senior management talk to make a client's senior management, after which we got to meet with an entirely different team than before. Enter Charlie. Charlie was on a different part of the team from Bob, and we hadn't had any dealings with him before. Charlie told us that Bob had been transferred back to make a client HQ. Client Corp was being disbanded, and now Charlie had to take over from Bob. Charlie also had no idea of what had transpired before this, so we filled him in. You see, Bob had pulled a fast, malicious compliance on us. He knew he was being transferred back to HQ, so he tried to screw us over and also make it look like the project cancellation costs were smaller than what they actually are. To give Charlie due credit, he did try to help us resolve the cancellation fees. Only problem is, with the stunt that Bob had pulled just before leaving, we were collectively stuck in a cesspit. 
You see, in order to correct the purchase order to the original correct value, it needed to be verified by the originator of said purchase order, Bob, who was no longer around, and approved by a manager, Bob's boss, who was also no longer around. To make things worse, since the larger project had been cancelled, finance and accounting functions were now taken over by Make It Client's finance team, who had no idea of the backstory, and a boatload of suspicion as to why the purchase order now has to be retroactively increased after project cancellation in order to facilitate cancellation fee payment to a supplier by a huge amount no less. What do you mean you need to increase the PO amount from 10,000 to X million after the fact? We need to get verification from the originator and approver to proceed. All in the midst of a corporate reshuffle within client slash mega client corp, which meant we had to deal with a rotating cast of different people who again had no idea of the backstory to all of this. Fun times. All in all, it took us a year of painful back and forth explanations and negotiations, often repeating the same story to multiple senior managers, multiple parties, accusations of fraud, some creative negotiations, including transference of inventory to the parent company, Mega Client, to support some of their other projects, which in turn messed with our company's other projects with Mega Client, to get things finally resolved and recoup our losses. Meanwhile, just dealing with all this meant that effectively I couldn't be reassigned to other projects because dealing with this became a full-time job in itself. Thus went one of the most stressful and unproductive years of my career, and also an abject lesson in personal and professional integrity. Please dear readers, don't do this to your suppliers and always pay attention to the cancellation clauses in your contracts. Is that right OP? Don't defraud a company of millions of dollars? You know, if I was on the hook for that much money, maybe I'd want to think about it, but I don't think I'd have the courage to try to do something like that. Do you think Bob should be behind bars for what he tried to pull here? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by Limina Ninja. Always let karma have her last word, and always follow the rules at a customs border. A few years ago, I lived in Germany, EU, and wanted to spend winter holidays in my homeland. Serbia, which is not in the EU. I packed my three kids on my back seat. The twins were less than two years old and the elder daughter was seven. I drove from Hamburg to Hungary where I had to cross the border to enter Serbia. However, due to the holiday season, the line with cars and buses was more than one kilometer long. The waiting time was several hours. There was no other option but to wait patiently and move slowly forward, five meters at a time. As the time went by, my kids got restless. I had to feed them, change their diapers, calm them down. Any parent who travels with toddlers knows the situation well. As I was focused on them, I didn't notice that two buses went through the border and that I had to move my car forward for some 30 to 40 meters. Three cars behind me used this opportunity to slip by and get in front of me. By the way, such thing is not allowed before a customs border. I noticed it and went out of my car. I said to them that their conduct wasn't fair. I had three small kids in my car and I wasn't using that situation to my advantage. And if I could wait patiently for my turn, so could they. But they all ignored me. I didn't tell them that this conduct is illegal, as I thought everyone knew this. There were several signs that warned the drivers not to drive around and pass a car in front of them. I didn't have time or energy to argue with them, so I got back into my car and thought, if I can wait for six hours, then I can also wait for six and a half hours. Some 15 minutes later, two custom officers patrolled down the line of cars. For some reason unknown to me, probably routine, I can't tell. They looked into each car, and when they saw my toddlers in the back seat, one of them told me they would immediately open the second gate, to speed things up. Hungarians are great, aren't they? Three drivers from those cars in front of me heard this, they were outside having a smoke, and rushed back to their driver's seats. I knew what was coming. I started the engine and let the three of them block my way, cut me off, and park at the front of the second, newly opened gate. I slowly left the first line and parked my car behind them. I had a gut feeling that my sister Karma, the Witch of Witches, was about to act. Those two custom officers saw what happened and let the three cars through the gate, but they also told them to park their cars at the lots inside the customs border. Anyone who ever crossed the Hungarian-Serbian border knows what that means. They were going to search all three cars and their passengers and baggage thoroughly, which meant 
hours and hours of waiting, answering endless questions, unpacking, packing, and all sorts of annoying stuff. When I arrived at the gate, the custom officers greeted me and asked for our passports. What's the purpose of your travel? One of them asked. I told them, I want my kids to spend this Christmas with their grandparents in Serbia. He stamped our passports, greeted me, and wished me safe travel and Merry Christmas. As a Christmas gift for my kids, he promised that he'd keep the three cars at the customs border for the next six hours at least, and that they'd have to pay a really nasty fine for their misdemeanor. The second customs officer said, I hope you enjoyed your stay in Hungary, ma'am. Oh yes I did, sir. I surely did. For all the times we've been spited by a line cutter, this is one moment where we finally all get a collective revenge. Say it with me. Nobody likes a line cutter. This next story is by Crazy Co. Kids. Well, you said your legs were broken. I'm taking a bath. Eventually, I hear my parents yelling my name, so I get out, dry off, get dressed, and walk downstairs. Do you want to watch TV? Is this an emergency, I ask? Are your legs broken to shout through the house like that? Yes, they are, Mom answers. Without skipping a beat, I simply say, Don't move, and run to grab my phone. I come back pretending to dial the non-emergency number asking, Alright, how much does it hurt? How did it happen? I'm calling the hospital. No, 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 Dad answers. Our legs aren't broken. Then why did you say they were, I ask? You told me that's only for emergencies. And to use my legs because you didn't raise a lazy child. This is like one of those universal experiences everybody kind of experiences with their parents. The classic moment where they yell for your name. So you're like... Well, they're yelling, I'll yell back. So you say, what? And you either get one of two things. You either get no reply whatsoever until you literally go to them, or you get the classic, don't yell at me, as if it isn't the most hypocritical thing for them to say. And our final story of the day is by Like Hawaii. You told me to apply for a different job because you don't provide the benefits? Okay. So for the past few years, my partner was in a job he was feeling miserable in and wanted to quit. However, he couldn't do it as they told him he would have to pay for the training he received if he leaves. His work doesn't provide any decent sickness benefits, so if you're off ill and want to be paid decent money, you have to take it as a holiday. After I heard and witnessed this, I've told him about the benefits my company provides, plus bigger salary and more holidays. Also, they give your birthday off as an extra day. So over the next week after this talk, my partner's had a casual chat with his manager and mentions my work. His manager, Steve, gets defensive and says something along the lines of, Nobody provides better holidays than this place, and he's on 24 days of holidays working around 40 hours a week, excluding public holidays. My partner, who waited for this moment, informs him that at my place, the lowest position provides 26 days holiday plus public holidays, plus flexible working hours, on top of a fully paid sick leave, so you don't lose any money if you're off, and medical coverage while working around 35 hours a week. Steve gets pissed off. He then shouts that if my partner likes my job that much, he should apply there, believing my partner wouldn't be able to get a new job. Well, this week my partner handed in his resignation letter as he got the position in the company I work for, and now has to do less hours, get more holidays, money, and proper benefits while doing Monday to Friday. His work was shocked and tried to negotiate by saying they can generously offer him doing 12-hour Saturday shifts on top of his usual ones without extra pay. As this offer was too generous, my partner had to decline and stick to his current notice. Really? You're sure you want to leave? We can give you even more hours at our bad pay with no benefits. We'll give you an extra long Saturday shift, and we won't even throw in any extra time or overtime for the 12-hour shift. Come on, you can't turn that down, you gotta be dumb to say no to that. This is like somebody trying to sell a 20-inch TV and you ask them how much they're trying to sell it for, and they say $500. You just say, well, that's ridiculous, there's way better offers, I'm gonna just take this one over here. It's only $150 here. They say, fine, fine, wait, 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 wait. Just for you, $4.99. Don't even deserve to give them a reply at that. Such a bad offer. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. 
And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.